Hello, dear colleagues, dear participants uh, of the conference. My name is Artem Nikonorov, and I lead the uh, AI Center for the Samara University. And despite the fact that uh, I uh, the overall topic uh, uh, is uh, nanophotonics and uh, deep learning. I would like to maybe um, talk a bit broader and touch on the nanophotonics a bit later. The idea of my work is uh, about how the AI transfuses into different areas of uh, human activity, starting from technical and uh, up to uh, sci um, arts and uh, AI yeah, has uh, own history and one of the main dates to start calculating the history of AI is 1990 with the 13th Hilbert problem uh, when we had to find the uh, solutions for the seventh power um, equation. Uh, academic uh, Arnold and Kalmogorov uh, solved this in 1957 from Russia in a broader sense um, as a uh, visualization theorem. And based on that, George Sibanko uh, further created a theorem about the universal approximator that is the basis for modern neural models and the deep learning models. And in a big way, the AI. So this theorem was the start of a big wave of interest to AI, and such waves were multiple. There were multiple waves, and uh, we uh, had so-called winter of AI. But now we're obviously on the peak of um, the of, uh, AI summer uh, that started with uh, uh, the work by, uh, by Hinton in uh, 2012, announcing the CNN AlexNet. And starting from there, AI had a very fast and dramatic growth of popularity, both in the academic world and in the business world. As you can see, starting in 2014, Gartner's curve uh, uh, is, uh, shows the peak for deep learning or deep neural. Despite that, in 2018, we had to rethink that rise of AI because current classical CNNs have some fundamental issues at, its, at their core. Like they work well with uh, big data sets, but if we don't have a decent data set, then a direct application of such a model will not work. And this issue is uh, uh, still uh, being tackled by single shot learning or supervised deep learning. And we have interpretation issues for convolutional neural nets. And unlike cognitive systems uh, of a human brain, deep learning methods and uh, CNN-based methods are just a very convenient and a very good optimization model, allowing to solve uh, the issue based on stochastical gradient um, distribution. So, this model understands the statistics, but not the logic of our data, thus um, that underlies the process. So despite deep learning going past its peak, it did not fall into the pit of um, uh, disillusionment, uh, like with the blockchain technology. And this technology has broken into a number of real commercial applications like generative AI, embedded AI, adaptive AI, and so on. We see AI 
transfusing different areas of human activity and becoming uh, an end-to-end -end technology bridging different projects. So how does it happen? What are the projects? How can they look? I wanted to show this based on some of our projects by the AI Center. And to begin with, here's a task. The project that uh, was in the beginning of my presentation, Smart Optics, a project on the uh, border uh, of uh, AI and uh, uh, led by a big school by Professor Soifer, one of the best schools uh, for diffractional nanophotonics, and using their expertise and uh, deep learning, starting um, 2012 up to 2013, we decided to create new uh, tools for new vision tools. One of them is a diffractional lens that replaces the whole, uh, the whole camera set of lenses, which can replace uh, the optics that weigh more than a kilo. This allows us to get a lot of advantages in terms of both cost, both the cost and the weight, uh, up to two orders of magnitude. This is very interesting. In 2017, where we were included into ten Russian into their list of 10 Russian inventions that can change the world. And the idea was that uh, diffractional optics can um, uh, give, uh, ha have some uh, distortions like chromatic aberrations and others, and the reconstructive model based on deep learning can compensate for them, as we described in our 2018 article. So those systems find their application in superlight UAVs or some devices for small satellites. And uh, we are uh, part of Milner Hawking uh, project for sending the satellites to Alpha Centauri. And as the Watchman for the Planet pro um, project, our lens has sent to the low Earth orbit in uh, um, the coming days of this year. Also, based on the deep learning and uh, uh, the optics, we've created a hyperspectral camera that is uh, that works in uh, the UAV and shown uh, on the screen. It has its applications for smart agriculture, for um, city monitoring, per personalized medicine, um, industrial Internet of Things, and converge a lot of uh, areas of uh, the human activity. The results were published in uh, the Sensors Journal, and I would like to now talk to you about another line of application for the AI with uh, predictive diagnostics and anomaly detection. So here is the uh, technological complex where, where we work uh, to run some predictive analytics with a device uh, with a neural, neural model we've trained. It's a smart, uh, small built-in um, processor based on NVIDIA Jensen Nana. And what it does, it's uh, predicting the malfunctions of pneuma hydro accumulator. So it has 98% accuracy, enough for the um, application. And uh, we've solved a number of such issues for biological, medical, and social systems, including the systems where we could detect fraud in, uh, with the credit history fraud uh, in many systems. So detecting anomalies in uh, technical systems is um, an article we, are, we plan to publish in the census journal. Regarding the medical pro uh, projects, we have a number of uh, um, projects uh, analyzing medical 
images and uh, finding pathologies and uh, based on AI and applying AI to, for augmented reality issues and neurobiological um, questions. You see the main window of the system now, analyzing the brain activity. The system was created in cooperation uh, with the scientific centers uh, that we worked with, Yale, EPFL, and other leading uh, universities like College of London, Zurich University, the teams that participated in the development. And the system has been used in different projects in uh, the uh, neuroeconomy, neuropediatry, and pediatry, and uh, different other applications in the New York University, Yale, Switzerland, Germany, Barcelona. So here you have uh, you have it working in Zurich and Phantom Works in the uh, neuroeconomics uh, lab. So the original work was published in uh, 2018, and we keep publishing. Federal. So going to more applied projects, we worked with Sberbank on a very interesting and important uh, project for creating um, an avatar for uh, a TV uh, show host and uh, other big Russian uh, companies like Gazprom Neft, international companies like Huawei, Samsung, LG, and interesting startups from USA, London, and others, like with the EU technologies that was creating modern Russian uh, neuroprocessors. And despite, uh, besides uh, smart uh, retail stuff like that. Uh, we were also doing tracking and analysis of the human flow. We had uh, have some experience reconstructing the images uh, for um, a video post-processing and color correction and some software like plugins and uh, add-ons and even uh, for hardware by many big companies. And to finish the overview of our projects we had, here are some things we uh, are doing with arts. And uh, here, using AI is a very interesting thing. We can use it for augmented reality, digital archaeology, virtual museums. Our colleagues from Technical Cybernetics chair have created so-called social echolocator uh, to analyze uh, social sphere. And together with uh, our partners, we are now finding aesthetical aspects uh, in uh, using deep learning. It's interesting to find those uh, non, not uh, heavily defined and uh, uh, elusive concepts as uh, beauty and uh, aesthetics uh, based on deep learning and training uh, the neural net to understand it uh, and uh, make decisions based on this. So this has a lot of potential and uh, we have some publications for that. Uh, we are looking for a specialist in arts and in terms of uh, mm, uh, to, to, to collaborate with. And the number of uh, our projects uh, that I could not touch is intellectual traffic analysis and uh, developing neural processors, processors and uh, a couple of things to mention are, as I hope I was able to show, AI is a transformative and binding technology merging different things like robotics and uh, agriculture, medicine, photonics, and other things. What is also very important is that using AI gives you synergy 
uh, when you combine a number of areas, the, uh, the sum is more than just the parts. And this effect is, is important and pleasant to watch. So, to conclude, I'd like to say that we are ready to uh, work together and collaborate. We are glad that uh, we live in the era of AI and that uh, we are solving such interesting applied uh, um, problems. Thank you. Bye-bye.